Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's nice to have you back. We have Pastor Paul Menene from England. We have Pastor John Enalima from Lagos, Nigeria. We have Pastor uh, Pastor Len, I mean, Len from uh, Chicago. We have Pastor Durek from Ontario. We have Canada. We have Pastor Bank from Atlanta. So we have been discussing about what we have received from Ukraine. What we see that is different in this country, in this move, in the embassy of God, and the new, the church shift model, and how we think that could contribute, or what we think could, that could add to the, to the, to the church the way it is right now. And what are the things that we need to improve on in the church the way it is right now? And, um, so you people are saying basically that the purpose of the church is not to impress the people. Okay. What about, and, or not to, not just to make the people feel good, but to equip them to go become the ministers themselves individually. But that's not what we see in the church. What we see in the church is that the man of God goes to pray all week to get revelation that will intrigue the congregation and to be able to say it in a way that nobody has seen before so that people could clap more so that they could keep on coming. And otherwise, if you, if you are good in that one, and secondly, if you are able to perf perform miracles to make sure that you really bless into those people, you make sure they get breakthrough. The purpose of this church has almost been shifted to a service center where you help people get breakthrough of miracles and healings. But for that to happen, you need to be a good performer who has gone to wait on God by yourself. You are the one waiting on God. You are the ones seeking revelation so that you could release it so that the people could be blessed and get breakthrough and then come back. That's what we obtain. That is what is obtainable today. That's what we see today. You think something is wrong with that model? Yeah, because that's not complete. I don't think it was the plan of God or the intention of God to just have a church, so to speak, that ministers just to the church. Everything you just described ministers just to the church. Quote unquote. That, I mean, Isaiah chapter 49 talks about how Jesus, if he just came for the Jews, it would not be a great thing. It would be a light thing for the descendants of the Jews. But that God wants him to be a greater light to the Gentiles. So, the essence of that being, if the church is to be the church, we must equip the people to take this gospel message outside of the church, period, to every sphere of human uh, endeavor and transform the society. But we know that God blesses people. God is a healer. God is a, you know, gives word of revelation, word of knowledge, and those things. Yeah. But is that the reason why Jesus said, that is not what you are supposed to go and preach. Go preach the gospel of the kingdom. Go preach the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and all these things shall follow you. Is that, the, is that what try, Jesus is trying to say, that our emphasis, what we are supposed to preach, is not the things that are supposed to be following you. It's not the blessings. Not the healing, not the miracles. So we are actually not supposed to be advocating that. We are not supposed to be preaching that. We are supposed to be preaching the blessing, the mess, the kingdom. Yes. Well, then these things follow. So our emphasis these days in the church, though, has been on those things. Yes. So I don't get it. You want to add to it? <laughs> we, we, we just missed it. We, 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 we missed the priority and the focus. We've placed the focus on the wrong things. Yes, if we preach the message of the kingdom of God, all of those things follow automatically. You don't have to beg for them. You don't have to pray about them. They are definitely things that do follow. I mean, Jesus, in Mark 16, when he gave the instruction, the Bible says those guys went everywhere preaching, and the Lord was walking with them. See, that's not their own part. Their part was just obey God. You just go do what God told you to do. God, on his own now, will walk with you and bring confirmation, miracles, or whatever he needs to do to attest to what is being said. The problem is we are not moving. And if we are not moving, those things cannot follow. So we need, we need to be moving so that we can see the following of the other things that God promised. So we need to change our emphasis. And that's why church shift has been a fresh breath air, at least to me and to those that I serve, to understand that we need to have a paradigm shift. We need to shift the way we're thinking. We need to shift the way we see church. We need to shift the way we see God doing the church that he died for. 
Do you get, uh, do you get my question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come please help me. Uh, basically, what we're seeing here is that the message of the kingdom is not what the church has been preaching. That what are supposed to be tools confirming the message yes. or arresting the attention of people that need to hear the message is what we're meant to become the message. Mm -hmm. We've majored on the minor. Uh, yes. Minor than the major. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. But the message of the kingdom is that the values of God, the things that are important to God must become important to men. Mm -hmm. That the principles of God must what society runs on. Mm -hmm. The message of the kingdom is that people need to know God, people need to understand the principles by which God operates in this world. Diligence, honesty, yeah. sincerity, these are the things that exalt nations, yeah. exalt families. People need to discover why God created them and serve God with their lives. But what we've done is that the signs and wonders that God gave to the church to confirm that message to show that I'm with you, <laughs> we are planning yeah. to become the message. Or to catch people's mm -hmm. attention. Or to get people's yeah. attention yeah. so that they can then hear the message itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Signs and wonders mm -hmm. redeem the man, mm -hmm. but uh, the principles of the kingdom of God redeem the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I live in a, a nation where we, we put high priority on signs and wonders. But if, you, if you're comparing the church as it is in the New Testament to uh, Israel, signs and wonders help them get through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But signs and wonders were not the possession of the promised land. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about possessing the earth as a reason. Jesus emphasized signs and wonders prior to the cross. Mm -hmm. And then there's a reason he emphasized and didn't even mention signs and wonders in the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Didn't even mention it. After the cross, he says, now all authority has been given to you. Signs and wonders are expected. Yes, that's great. But now, because all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth, I'm expecting you to do something greater. Mm -hmm. I'm now expecting you to actually subdue what I paid for, which is greater than I signs see. and wonders. Mm -hmm. I understand you didn't finish. Uh, you know, if you if you think about it, because of signs and wonders, the multitudes came to Jesus. But once they come, he never preached that to them. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Now, wow. if you look at it in that shape, that God uses signs and wonders to grow the church, to bring people to church. Yes. But, yes. but imagine that as a pastor, that now I've, I've been crying for the people to come. They've come. And I don't know what to do with them. Well, well, what the only thing left for me to do because I want to make I don't want them to go is that I will do everything possible to keep them. So I have to become an actor. I have to think, I have to start. Imagine that you have a 7,000 member congregation and you don't know why they're there. No university in the world measures its significance by the number of students it has, it measures its significance by the impact of her students who have graduated around the world. So the impact of a church, the, the significance of a church is what. Are your people doing yeah. in society? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, in one of the scriptures that you know That's really good. fascinates me a lot is um, Acts, Acts nineteen, when Paul went to Ephesus and he first of all he met twelve men, you know, asked them about the Holy Spirit, God filled, and then he started to teach. The Bible says he was teaching the uh, the kingdom of God. Some people didn't hear, then he separated them, and he was dis he said he was disputing daily with them, and then over a period of two years, they said signs and wonders was. I mean, fill the whole place that even unbelievers were trying to use the name of Jesus Christ yeah. to yeah. cast out devils. That's yeah. But all he was teaching, he was teaching about the kingdom of God, yeah. the kingdom of God, the kingdom yeah. of God. And all the signs and wonders were going on, handkerchiefs were being taken away from his body. But that wasn't, that wasn't his primary message. It was the confirmation of the real message, which is to yeah. equip the, the people to bring the kingdom of God to the world. So I think that is uh, what's happening is just like they said, we are majoring in the minor and minoring in the major. But the shift that is taking place right now is for us to now major in the major. Amen. You know, this is the message. Tracing it from the Lord Jesus Christ to all the other apostles. That's what they all preached. Paul, Peter, they all preached the kingdom of God. Yeah. Philip went to Samaria, preached Christ unto them, the kingdom of God. And then the signs and wonders confirmed it. They, they listened to him. So that's yeah. what yeah. they preach. And that's what we need to return to right now yeah. and start to preach. Future church. Yes, because that's the, the future church. The kingdom itself carries the miracles. The miracles uh, are uh, hidden in the kingdom. Brilliant. So when Brilliant. you get the kingdom, you get the miracle. Brilliant. Absolutely. It's Brilliant. just like one of your messages, you say that God told you about that. You say, the clothes I'm wearing, people give it to me. It's not because I'm good for nothing. I'm, I'm good or I'm best. No, it's because I'm carrying the kingdom in me. 
So the clothes they are giving not to me, but to the kingdom. Yes. So the kingdom inside of me is attracting. It is Value. the kingdom that attracts. Yes. So the more I have the kingdom, the more they come. Mm. And so the, not the opposite. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, you know, yes. seek ye first the kingdom. the kingdom. And those things will be attracted. Yeah. attracted. So but we're going after those things and living the kingdom. Yes. So we make the kingdom the priority in our message and everything. And then all, the, all those things yeah. are added. Because when people see the kingdom in you, they don't want to go. Jesus said to them, these people have been with me for three days. <laughs> Why are they saying no there? food? No food. <laughs> because the kingdom have the food. The kingdom has everything. They don't want to go anywhere. They mm-hmm. just want to eat the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You have the kingdom, you get the healing, you have deliverance, you yeah. get everything. They are embedded in the kingdom. Let me ask you this. In all of this, in all, all, everything we're talking about, do you not think that in order to really, really get this message in the people, God will send you maybe a 12, a 10, that you must make yourself accessible to, be vulnerable with, uh, transpe- See, because I'm saying this from North American perspective, where we have these icons, pictures. Uh, you can't touch them. You can't speak to them. Uh, again, going back to the Old Testament uh, model, where when the priest touch, touches an unclean thing, the priest becomes unclean. Mm-hmm. Old, Old Testament. Mm-hmm. But in the New, when you touch an unclean thing, it becomes clean. Mm. So it's, it's a, now I'm saying this because what's happening is we see our leaders as bigger than life. They can all make any mistakes. Their life is perfect. Uh, everything is hunky dory. Nothing ever goes wrong. So the impression we get from the pulpit all the time is that of strength, never seen any weakness. So when something happens to that man, number one, everybody just says, "Wow, how can that happen?" <laughs> Whereas Jesus, his disciples saw him when he was weak. Mm-hmm. They saw him cry. Now, I don't know how many of our leaders have ever cried before their associates or shown any semblance of any kind of weakness. So what I'm asking you is, do you not think that that issue of transparency or being vulnerable before those that are very connected with you helps them to understand, number one, your humanity, and number two, that you receive grace from God to do what you're doing and therefore, they can also tap into that grace mm. so that they can also be like you. Brilliant. Brilliant.